Bueno, en primer lugar, buenos días a todos. First of all, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for being here today at this hearing. This is our 181st period of sessions. This is our hearing number nine, and the goal is to follow up what happened in the work visit in Colombia. It was requested by a group of organizations from the civil society. I won't name them all because there are several, and then they will take the floor. I am Antonia Urrejola. I am the president of the commission and I am the reporter for Colombia and I am accompanied by the second vice president, Commissioner Flavia Piovesan, Commissioner Joel Hernandez and Commissioner Stuardo Rallon. Both Mr. Rallon and Mr. Hernandez were with me in the visit that we had in Colombia in the midst of this year. Also, we have Tania Renault, the reporter for Freedom of Expression, Pedro Vaca. I do not see the Desca reporter, I guess she is. We also have Maria Claudia Pulido, the monitoring deputy secretary, and the entire team of the executive secretariat that is following up Colombia in the different topics related to this hearing and also the entire team that makes this possible, interpreters, technicians, and all the team that organizes virtual hearings. So hello, everyone. We would like to thank the presence of the state in this hearing and also the civil society organizations. The commission made two invitations, special invites, the representative of the office of the UN High Commissioner for HR, Juliet de Rivera and Carlos Camargo from the office of the obvious person. I don't see him, but I am sure that he is there. So as we have these special guests, the hearing will be conducted in the following way, 15 minutes for the civil society, then 15 minutes for the state for comments and observations and then we're going to give the floor for seven minutes to our special guests the ombudsman and the representative from the un each one for seven minutes and after this time the commission will make comments questions and observations so that you can answer and then organizations from the civil society will have 10 minutes, the state 10 minutes, and according to the time that we have left, we will have more comments from the UN representative and the ombudsman should they want to. So first I am going to give the 15 minutes to the SCOs. We have subtitles and you will see the globe there for the interpretation. Please keep your microphones off if you are not speaking. And there is a clock. I'm trying to find it now because there are so many people here and I don't know if you see there the clock, it shows the time that you have, so please confirm from the state and the SCOs if you can see the clock. It's not working now, but do you see it? So please bear the clock in mind and I will let you know if you are using more time. So first SCOs, thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning to the Colombian state, the honorable members of the IACHR and the general audience. We thank you for this space to talk about the serious violations of human rights in Colombia on April the 28th that was approved by the or seen by the commission. I am Maria Fernanda Escobar from the civil society in Colombia. We should highlight that this hearing was prepared and it is part of an articulated effort of more than 25 regional and Colombian organizations. 
Today, we are going to tell you about the situation of human rights after the national demonstration and the visit of the Commission to Colombia. Secondly, we are going to present some suggestions for the set in motion for the special follow-up mechanism for Colombia, and then we're going to make our requests. We're going to have visual aids during our presentation. First, we would like to say that given the serious security situation against different groups related to the national strike, today we will not present any cases nor testimonies. However, we will present additional information in a private way after this hearing that we would like to follow up with the Honorable Commission. I will give the floor to Luis Carlos. Hello everyone, Luis Carlos Montenegro Almeida, Technical Secretary of one of the civil society organizations. Now we are going to present updated data about violence in the social protest after the commission visit and its impact on vulnerable groups. Also, we are going to show how the recommendations of the commission were not implemented and this is why it is urgent to set in motion the special follow-up mechanism mentioned by the Commission. The visit showed several violations to human rights in the framework of the national strike at the end of April 2021. After the visit, more than four international missions saw how serious the violations of human rights are in social protests. For example, the mission SOS Colombia carried out between 3 and 12 July with 41 investigators from 11 countries visited many regions and they realized that there were 11 methods of victimization and lots of complaints presented. In this regard, several organizations present, we are still accompanying the protests and documenting violations to human rights that we've seen in August, September and October. The dynamics of police violence against peaceful protesters were kept. Likewise, there still was the criminalization and judicialization of community leaders, stigmatization of human rights advocates and the disproportionate, disproportionate use of force. So on April 28th up to September 28th, there were at least 7,394 violations of human rights and you can see on screen some details. From this, we are concerned by that presented by the forced disappearance working table that has informed about the disappearance of 820 people in Colombia. And we don't know what is happening now with 312 of them. And we would like to stress the violence against youth, especially those coming from marginalized and poor sectors. These youth that are exercising the right to national protest is the new internal enemy in Colombia. And now I will talk about the differentiated impacts on Afro-descendants, indigenous peoples, women, children, and LGBTQ plus groups when they exercise their right to protest. We've seen an increase of hate, speech, violence, and harassment against Afro-descendants and indigenous peoples. And also their leaders are being persecuted in terms of with what happened with the national strike. And this has put in risk the peaceful protest. There were 108 homicides in Cali, 39 against Afro people. Also, there were 466 situations of violence in manifestations and 13.7% were against Afro people. In terms of indigenous populations, from the moment of the visit of the commission up to now, the exercise of the Mingas, especially in some cities, they were still accused of having illegal funds. And the government is not publicly rejecting these acts of discrimination and racism. Also, between July and September 2021, there was a total of 13,600 
39 victims of human rights violations in indigenous population, 163 indigenous people were harassed in the second queue of 2021. Between April and September, there were 48 cases of leaders that suffered uh, human rights violation, especially from peoples, from some of the indigenous peoples. And also there was a, the responsibility of the SMAT in several organizations and also 22 collective threats registered, registered by the Human Rights Observatory of the UNIT. And this fact took place in the indigenous Minga articulated to the national strike. This is why we are calling upon the state and the commission for them to carry out a specific assessment of the current situation of security of indigenous and Afro populations in order to analyze the risks related to manifestations that are forcing leaders to have forced uh, movements and also there is special cases of violence against Afro women. And there was no accompanying whatsoever according intersectional needs, generating the lack of protection for them. And finally, honorable commissioners, we must mention the violence that we've seen against women and LGBTIQ plus population. From April to July, 833 women were violence of, I'm sorry, were victims of police violence and 520 were detained, 141 were injured, 95 were uh, assaulted and four were assassinated. And there were three cases of police violence against LGBT people. Caribe Afirmativo reported the absence of guarantees in a, an investigation that is being conducted against a gay man. And also there's another trans organization where the victim was re-victimized, ignoring the protocols. We from the organizations would like to point out the lack of attention given to this situation and also the, we would like to stress the risk of this type of group or groups in social protest. Also, we see that there are obstacles for women, children and LGBT people to have access to justice as the Commission and other international missions have verify the situation in Colombia is still very serious. This is why we need to set in motion the special follow-up mechanism for the fulfillment of recommendations. And for this, I will give the floor to my colleagues. Thank you. I am Sandra Luna, and I'm representing the organizations of women in this articulation. In paragraph 187 in the document issued by the Commission after visiting Colombia in June this year, it was announced the set in motion of a special follow-up mechanism and the SCOs and organizations of women are presenting a proposal of the minimum elements for this follow-up mechanism with a gender perspective. This mechanism would represent a window of opportunity for the Colombian state to fulfill its international obligations established in the Inter-American Instruments for the Protection of Human Rights. And here we have the respect of life, the right to protest, personal integrity, access to justice, and the specific obligations for historically discriminated groups. Let's take, for example, the Inter-American Convention Against Racism and also the protection of LGBTQ population and several conventions to eliminate violence against women where all these populations' rights are recognized and states are urged to strengthen the tools for their protection. Also, to move forward to achieve the Agenda 2030 and also considering the SDG 5 and SDG 16. So we would like to propose to propose five things to be included in this mechanism. First, how it will be made up of. Two, the methodology for this. Three, accountability by the state. And four, 
the development of indicators following the recommendations of the Commission. So considering this preparation of the mechanism, we propose first for it to have a working team focused on the mechanism and that there should be a fair confirmation to the members of this team must have expertise in gender perspective and indigenous and Afro-descendant populations to guarantee this perspective in the activities. And three, the creation of the mechanism cannot mean that these people with these same tools are going to conduct the monitoring of the Colombian situation with a new name. And considering the methodology of the mechanism, we propose the specific creation of this methodology that should include the participation of the SCOs. Two, there should be periodic meetings with SCOs guaranteeing the participation of women, LGBTIQ, indigenous and Afro-descendant population organizations. Likewise, there should be spaces with the representation of all the stakeholders involved in the guarantee of human rights and also the representation of diversity of spokespeople and organizations of human rights in the territories that could have a an ethnical racial component and a gender component also we believe that there should that, that this should be or this should include the transparency principle guaranteeing to all parties access to information offered in the framework of its functioning the opposition or opposing to the access to information would weaken the mechanism and the guarantee of human rights also we suggest the presence of the organizations of regional civil society organizations if their participation is pertinent Thirdly, we propose accountability by the state. We believe that this should be an axis of the mechanism as a way to strengthen the guarantee of human rights. Accountability, likewise, shall always include the differential perspective, including rights of women, LGBT plus population, and an ethnical racial component. And this accountability shall be done through the presentation of periodic reports by the state and hearings called upon by the commission. This information presented must be relevant, up to date, and it should include the differential and public measures. And the last point of our proposal has to do with the development of indicators about the fulfillment of the recommendations by the commission. Here, we believe it is crucial for them to be different types of indicators to carry out the follow-up. We propose recommendations of process indicators, impact, and always with a per special and differential perspective. And secondly, there should be room for all organization and especially those of women, Afro-descendant, indigenous populations and LGBT plus populations to present reports about the level of fulfillment by the state without making organizations or giving them the responsibility to generate the quantitative data. And finally, SCOs would like to say that we are at your disposal to support the commission in the setting motion of this mechanism and whatever might be necessary to guarantee its effectiveness so that the violence faxed will not be unsolved. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Alejandra Escobar Cortázar, and I am a member of the SEO. We would like to request additional minutes so as to make our requests, who, which can be uh, discounted from the uh, ten, the other ten minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. We value what the Commission gathered in its visits and with the objective of guaranteeing the follow-up of its recommendations, we request first maintain the monitoring of the situation in Colombia in order to warranty the persistence and uh, to avoid the violence by the state's uh, changes and the impunity persistence in the case of human rights violations. That is why we request frequent meetings with the teams of the commission so as to have uh, uh, 
an adequate flow of information about the situation in Colombia as to the security, sensitivity and seriousness of the information, we believe it's important to maintain bilateral meetings with the Commission in order to inform them of these facts in consideration of the observations of the visits and what was posted in this hearing, we request to put into practice the uh, created follow-up mechanisms for which it is necessary to ensure the participation of civil society organizations in all stances of um, all the stages of follow-up of the mechanisms. We need to take into consideration the minimum aspects raised in this hearing for the follow-up of the mechanism, guarantee that all the information collected within these mechanisms is public, ensuring the protection of personal and sensitive data, consider the importance of the recommendations and in order to value its commitment, its compliance with it, it's important for the commission to visit the country regularly. Finally, our third request is to uh, reaffirm the commitment of the civil society in order to advance in the warranty of human rights. We request to agree on a first meeting between the commission, the state and the civil society. Thank you. With this, the petitioner organizations will close our intervention. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you took two extra minutes. I will give the floor to the representation of the state during 15 minutes. Good morning, Madam President, Madam Pro, uh, Pro, Pia Besam, Tania Renault, and commissioners, petitioners, and the rest of the participants in this meeting. I would like to thank you for inviting us to be here in this hearing. And this is one more space for us to have a respectful dialogue in the framework of the Commission and following up the visit of the Commission to Colombia. As Ms. Urrejola said, in Colombia, we are having a democratic society and also it is a there is rule of law with capacity not only to face the situations related to the protest and also to prevent and see how to avoid situations of violence honorable commissioners we respect the right to peaceful protests because this is a way to express the freedom of speech and the exercise of democracy. Therefore, the state and the public forces must guarantee these rights and the material exercise of democracy. Likewise, aligned to this and as was affirmed by the very own commission in paragraph 82 of the document, protest and human rights, the violent actions of protesters or third parties putting at risk the life or physical integrity of people participating or not of the protest force the state to carry out the proportionate actions to prevent and avoid these facts, limiting the right to protest of these people. Let's remember that 89% of the 12, I'm sorry, the 12,400 protests were completely peaceful. 89% of the 12,000, over 12,000 protests. And after the visit of the commission up to 9 of September, there were 15,772 protests all over the country. And there was a very limited intervention of the SMART just to guarantee the safety of the citizens and law and order. We must say that the methods used 
in the protest like the road obstruction did not allow the supply of food for some cities and also they did not allow the transport of oxygen for hospitals during the peaks of the pandemic affecting the right to life and health of millions of Colombians. Likewise, we must remember the unprecedented violent facts that destroyed public infrastructure necessary for all Colombians, like buses, public transport stations, police stations, legal buildings, private goods that equal to $3.3 million. The state would like to reiterate violence during manifestations, but when it was perpetrated by infiltrated people, this show the need for the intervention of these in acts. The prosecutor's office is investigating each one of the crimes committed in the framework of the protests, including the acts of the public forces and also the vandalic acts against police officers. The prosecutor's office will update this information in this session. Honorable commissioners and members from the petitioning party, even though the recommendations of the commission are not mandatory, the state has shown its will to work from each one of its institutions to be more effective in the promotion and protection of human rights in the country. Proof of these are the dialogue exercises in the Ministry of Interior with several actors from the protest and also the promotion of dialogue spaces that allowed us to reach consent, the protection of vulnerable groups and the reform of the police. All of these actions will be detailed by the organizations in a few minutes. Therefore, the state has concluded that regardless of what we are doing according to the monitoring of human rights in Colombia and the context of social protests, a special follow-up mechanism does not seem to be a pertinent method for the state if we want to keep on working in prevention, human rights violation, and this context of meetings or peaceful protests. Now I will give the floor to the national police represented by Mr. Garcia, who will talk about the police reform and the actions that were already taken in order to improve the transparency and the protection of human rights and also the professionalization of the police. Then the prosecutor's office will talk about the investigations against or about those responsible for violent acts in the protest. And thirdly, the Ministry of Interior will talk about the protection of Afro populations, indigenous populations, women and LGBT populations. And I would like to say that the information presented by the civil society do not coincide with the information that we have in the state. But regardless of the numbers, I would like to say that the country expresses its total rejection to human rights violations against people in general. Thank you very much. Good morning. I would like to greet everybody present in this public hearing. As it was mentioned by Mr. Carlos Altura Morales, I am part of the National Police and we am going to talk about all the activities taken 
the national police started a profound redesign of the police which is oriented towards the strengthening respect of human rights and on the other hand it professionalizes the police and the partic participation of the civil society for the improvement of the security of all Colombians. This is a comprehensive process that answers to different criteria and to the changes that have been taking place in Colombia and in the world as a whole. And there have been important processes of national reforms in Europe and in other countries as well. This is this does not respond to a juncture, but to a need to improve the public service of the national police in Colombia. We have been redesigning our processes and updating the police. This process is based on some guidelines and the topics that were prioritized and we are working with a group of experts with seven experts who work in terms of professionalization of human rights and justice and we are applying a methodology which is called hablemos de policía these apply human rights standards of confidence and legitimacy. And as the commission has mentioned, it has a human rights approach. The professionalization, the implementation of technology are very important elements which are considered in these trainings. There are also two bills for the comprehensive transformation of the national police one is 632 which has which deals with the professionalization and the other one is about the national institute of the police these two bills are being treated in the senate and the these projects these bills uh, talk about all these criteria I have just mentioned um, in order to turn the police into a career that follows human rights standards. I would like to comment on the current process of um, transformation, which works in the incorporation of transparency mechanisms over the basis of uh, the professionalization and training with an approach of human rights. I would like to mention the work that is being done together with the police for with the QR code for the identification of the people providing services in order to provide tranquility to citizenships and so that citizens can um, denounce or uh, com make complaints and the monitoring centers cannot be manipulated by the public forces. The Ministry of Interior is installing 11,000 cameras for the national police as to the strengthening of the human rights approach in the police activity. We, start, we created the Office of Human Rights in the national police. It's used to work in, under the general inspection and Thanks to the recommendation of the commission, it was uh, moved and there is an expert of uh, human on human rights who is providing the service, also the uh, officer for the Office of the High Commissioner for the United Nations. We are providing current rep uh, frequent reports to the citizenship for the promotion of human rights. Since the beginning of the implementation of the new School of Human Rights to achieve all levels of training in the police in a cross-cutting way and applying uh, curricula, the subject of human rights, all po police persons are being educated in human rights in police, in in the national police and they will have the possibility to learn on the main values that um, 
have to do with the police profession and today the whole process of training of the police is being reviewed and the pertinent recommendations are being made as to the bills i already mentioned two and one of them includes the update of the sanctions and the topics that are related to procedures and tactics and it introduces the participation of citizens uh, in electronic files so that citizens can learn of these sanctions. We are going to facilitate the process of complaints and the review of the current sanction system applies the protocols of the use of the forces. The current Bill 032, which deals on the professionalization of the police, is focused on a human rights perspective. It's a qualitative leap towards the competence and the standard centers is created for topics that have to do with the use of force, human rights approach, and citizens' uh, attention. Both bills have been approved by the first uh, chamber and they are going to be debated now in the Senate. We also create the opportunity for police persons to certify their um, license. And there will be a new system of information based on evidence. I would also like to add that we created the consultory commission which will imply the recommendations of the civil society for the use of force and human rights and citizens' uh, attention. We started a dialogue process together with the civil society, which is being currently funded by the IDB with different sectors such as the academia, companies, and human rights defenders. There is a process of dialogue and uh, we deal on several issues. We started also the certification of the members of the police so that these standards can be included in each of the procedures. The review of procedures are adequate to the new model of action. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to have some additional minutes, which will be discounted from the following segment. So I would like to ask the prosecution office to intervene. Thank you. Good morning, Madam President of the Commission, Antonio Rejola. Good morning, the commissioners and the representatives of the victims and petitioners. The prosecution office has been in contact with the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights as to the subject of this hearing, even before the working visit to Colombia. This entity has presented to the commission three reports, one on May, one another one in June, and the other one in August. This permanent contact with the commitment, the commission is the commitment with the different organizations of human rights protections and with the uh, right to protest and the willingness to, to be accountable towards uh, the citizenship. As an institution of the, this public power, this commission has to investigate the facts that uh, amount to the crimes and for the cases in which it's necessary to accuse the people responsible before the courts. Facing that action, which is one of the most important ones, 
the commitment of the prosecution office with three instruments with which the specific lines for the protection and the due diligence of investigations were created. Among them, we have resolution 951 of 2021 in which the prosecutor of the nation, Ricardo Barbosa, established three teams that had to be well, that had to prioritize the three most serious acts that could happen within the protest. This uh, duty includes not to carry out investigation acts, but also to understand the dynamics that occurred in each of these situations. That is why this resolution was the one that marked our path for these investigations then we have directive 002 which was which complemented the resolution so as to conduct investigations in context always protecting right to protest to peaceful protest the prosecution office has not started any investigation that has to do with that situation but there were cases in which there were uh, abuses and with the compliance of all the standards of investigations that have been the path adopted by the prosecution office based on the recommendations of the commission and the different sentences that we see that due diligence has to be uh, very important we started to carry out an investigation for the investigation of conducts in within the demonstrations the competence of the police is exceptional and that is why the prosecution office has investigated the cases of affectation to human rights and this is what we have been doing during all these days and we would like to mention that the prosecution office did not stop investigating facing the results we would have already handed them in a previous opportunity but today out of the 29 cases of homicides we uh, clarified 21 percent of them in the cases of gender violence we have 13 victims and 27 percent of advance in those cases and in terms of the mechanisms of searches where all the institutions of the Colombian states have articulated, especially the prosecution with all its teams, the office on the ombudsperson and the location in real time of people. We have to remember that 627 cases were reported out of which 300 were located. 132 records that were duplicate and 100 that were inadmissible even though they are not admitted it doesn't mean that we cannot go on with the investigation 20 of them have uh, an urgent search uh, investigation mechanisms in place we have been strategically enough with uh, planning and executing all these planning plannings so as to warranty the due process of law, access to justice, efficiency, and clarification of the facts in the least time possible. Thank you. Now we will have the words of the Ministry of Interior. Just for you to know, you have already taken up seven minutes of the time you, of the extra time you have. So you have only three minutes. Okay, thank you, Madam Commissioner. We would like to greet you from the Office of Human Rights of the Ministry of the Interior. I would like to greet the commissioners and we would like to reiterate our commitment to human rights and the protection of uh, human rights defenders in the country. This, a space would like to uh, in this space we would like to address 
the situations within the protection of vulnerable groups such as human rights defender and people with different sexual orientation the different places of uh, dialogue that we have been leading since from the ministry of interior first facing the human right protection of groups in vulnerable situations such as human rights defender leaders journalists we would like to underscore that the effort made by the government is the drafting of the policy of uh, warranties and respect for human rights. Within this framework, this policy has uh, includes the duty of the public officials of not obstructing, of not breaching and tolerating and not tolerating breaches to human or human rights violations. The respect of human rights include a diagnosis whether these kinds of uh, guidelines are included. This is a strategy which is based in the prevention, promotion and protection of fundamental rights in the whole territory. In the Ministry of Interior, we are carrying out actions within a plan which has as a goal to carry out actions for the protection of human rights defenders and social leaders and journalists. In reference to the power role in, within the framework of the demonstrations, we indicate that the articulation with the Ministry of Interior is achieved through the correct proceeding by the um, early alerts, which are received by the Intersectorial Commission for the quick response to quick alerts through a special email address. We need to state that to date, we have not received early alerts within the framework of the demonstrations. As to the protection of uh, people in situation of vulnerability, we need to underscore that decreed 003 of January 2021 has to do with the non-discrimination principle. However, and each entity of the state has to have each um, internal proceedings with the gender approach. However, we need to highlight that the Ministry of Interior executes the um, table secretary for the LGBTQ people and is responsible for protecting public policy. We need to attend to the cases which violate the rights of people who are part of LGBTQ communities or people with diverse gender identity. Likewise, the complaints of urgent cases are received through the through another email address and the Ministry of Interior sends such complaints to the competent authorities. We would like to underscore that we received one complaint from the Department of Cordoba, which was, was redirected and was treated accordingly. And through this mechanism, we implement the actions necessary to prevent vulnerations and breaches of uh, rights and to protect the rights of uh, LGBTQI people facing these situations that arise. 
facing uh, as to the protection of women, one of the principal aspects of the government is prevention, comprehensive attention and warranty of justice and non-repetition for of violence against women in compliance with such purpose we uh, created the decree 1710 through which we created a special commission which articulates efforts from the competent authorities and since april 28 2021 the I would like to you to to shorten or to brief to be brief because you have already exceeded the presidential commission together with the articulated mechanism of prevention and attention to violence has monitored the violence against women within the protests. That is why we took action in order to warranty the access to justice in the case of gender-based violence and in other contexts. This commission works together with the 32 secretaries of women and the gender mechanism in the different departments and in the city of Bogota for the identification and the activation of solutions in the case of violence against women and the um, prosecution office issued a directive through which it establishes some guidelines for the judicialization of crimes committed against women and other guidelines are applied. The, uh, we also have a special uh, email in order to receive possible complaints within the context of the protests and we also enable a channel in order to complain or to report certain facts or actions against women and we have the directive 023 of sexual abuse within the police and about spaces of dialogue we would like to remind you that the government adopts necessary measures in order to warranty the right to meet and to uh, demonstrate thank you very much to everyone okay thank you and to be clear on how to continue with this hearing, I would like to thank the state for all the information. The state already used its 10 minutes and extra five minutes. Therefore, civil society organizations that had used eight minutes, you will have then 13 more minutes, okay? For comments. I will give the floor now to the ombudsman. Please, you have seven minutes and we have other hearings, so please use your seven minutes. And then I will give the floor to the representative of the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Thank you very much, Madam President. And I would like to say hello to the entire team of the Inter-American Commission. I would like to, re to greet also civil society organizations, representatives of the state and the UN and other participants. From the office of the obvious person in Colombia, public protest is a fundamental right and its protection is crucial for the rule of law. In this regard, from last year, we have issued recommendations on prevention and violence and how to accompany public protests. And on June 10, 2021, there was a resolution 077 that was issued. These recommendations are in line with those issued by the commission in its report from July, and I would like to talk about them. It is worth mentioning that the visit of the commission was important to start with the changes that were necessary. The 
Office of the Ombudsperson was trying to promote a process of genuine dialogue to foster trust between the state and citizens. Aligned with these recommendations and with a decree, on May 20, the national government installed a table for dialogue that, among others, has to promote dialogue mechanisms between the police authorities and citizens within the framework of protests. This table had an extraordinary session on July 14, and also in July we participated from the table of guarantees and social dialogue installed by the government with the intervention of young people who participated in the protests that were members of the first line. We participated from those spaces and there all the affected parties were able to express their concerns according to the exercise of those rights. Also, there was a table between the national government and the National Strike Commission and from our office, we were there as observers. Unfortunately, in this space, there was no agreement reached between the parties. So concerning the restructuring of the public forces, we've been reviewing together with the police and this office, the courses and training courses in terms of human rights of the members of the police force, and also reviewing the curriculum of that topic. Also in the police, there was a training course on human rights and the adequate use of force like the ones in October and September with 200 hours for 100 trainers from the 29 offices in the police and related to human rights. This office also worked hand in hand with the national police in these training dynamics through 76 activities in 20 offices with the participation of 800 offi uh, officers. Also, we have worked with the training for trainers for the SMART members, including the study and analysis of problems like stigmatization of different groups of people. Between August 10 and September 2nd, 2021, there were seven working sessions with the participation of 48 authorities from the police that are trainers in the territorial units. For 2022, we are planning to keep the training with other trainers. According to the investigations, the national office explained how these homicides belong to one minor, three officers, and one to the judicial officer. We've been told that the national prosecutor's office is investigating 240 cases, including 320 civilians, and there were 761 victims from the national police. We are waiting for the update of the investigation on those cases. This for this office is, is crucial for there to be guaranteed justice for all the direct victims and their families, and that no case shall remain unsolved. An important issue for our office is that of people who are missing. It is worth mentioning that according to the institutional table, this office told the national DA's office about the cases of people who are missing so that they can determine the right mechanism for the urgent search. And according to this mechanism, it is worth mentioning that once it is active, then the DA's office can give notice to hospitals, prisons, and all the authorities that could have information about the alleged victim in terms of unidentified bodies or people missing so that we can have enough information gathered in order to be able to carry out the urgent search. The goal is to find someone allegedly missing, alive or dead, and not the investigation of the commission of a crime. This is why this urgent search mechanism shall not be mistaken with the investigation of the forced disappearance crime. About that, we know that from April 28th and October 19th, there were 627 cases, out of which 
274 people were already located, 132 records belong to duplicated cases and 192 cases were not admitted in the urgent search mechanism because they were repeated names or people who were localized or insufficient information. Also, there are 29 urgent search mechanisms active. So after two months of this mechanism, if the person was not found, then the mechanism shall be closed. In these cases, the DA's office starts its own investigation for forced disappearance crime only when there are clues that there were facts related to this crime. In the case of the mechanisms that are still active, according to information given by the DA's office, there is no even certainty of the existence of these people who are being found because there are no relatives nor third parties claiming their absence or offering information about who is being searched. From this office, we have strengthened our support to protests. We have been notified by any vulneration and monthly we send the Supreme Court a report about what happens in manifestations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Camargo, for the information. Now I'll give the floor to Juliet Rivero, the representative of the Office of the UN High Commissioner for HR in Colombia. Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to greet all the members of the commission, state authorities, representatives of the CSO, and all the participants in this meeting. I would like to thank the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights for inviting us. I am Juliet de Rivero, and I am here in this public hearing as a representative for Colombia of the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. And I am here to offer the Commission information in an oral and informal way and without being under oath. And none of my comments should be understood as an express waiver of the privilege and immunity given by the UN according to the 46 Convention. So this being said, I would like to share with you that during the month of the protests related to the national strike, the HR Office of UN in Colombia followed up this situation. We verified cases and situations supporting the main findings written by the Inter-American Commission after its visit to Colombia in June 2021. I would like to share also that this Office of UN in Colombia finalized the systematization of the information gathered through this period, and we are going to be sending this information soon to the government of Colombia. We hope we can publish a document of lessons learned regarding human rights during the strike once we have received the inputs from the government. The strike that started on April 28th was a citizen peaceful strike with an unprecedented participation of young people that tried to have an impact in a situation of inequality affecting the country. We are concerned about the food insecurity affecting the country and the lack of opportunities for young people and women. This situation were deepened by the pandemic. The Office of Human Rights of UN in Colombia greets the peaceful manifestation, creativity of young people, their new organization ways and we believe that these are all contributions for democracy in Colombia. Our focus during the strike was to contribute to de-escalate violence and reinforce the protection of human rights, accompanying spaces of the state and the civil society. We wanted to promote exercises of dialogue and the several efforts at the national and especially local level that were taken in order to prevent violence. We greet protesters, authorities, the church, and other institutions that bet on dialogue and rejected violence in every way. Our task also was to remember the standards and to follow up the situations of human rights violations. 
we greet the invitation of the government to the commission to visit Colombia. We will look at the recommendations of the commission or a contribution to move forward in the protection of the peaceful meeting right and all the related and neighboring rights. The office observed that most protests were peaceful and we are concerned by the disproportionate use of force against protesters that we have documented arbitrary uh, detentions, cases of criminalization, cases of sexual and gender violence, and cases of attacks against journalists that we've documented. We are also concerned by the violent actions of non-state actors against protesters. We believe that we must strengthen the situation in order to give way to the peaceful protests and the state should be more proactive even against third parties. We also see that there was a use of violence against the public force and cases of vandalism. It is then worth mentioning that isolated cases of violence must be individualized and according to international law, these isolated incidents of violence are not enough to define a whole meeting as or label a whole meeting as non-peaceful. We recognize the obligation of the authorities to investigate the crimes committed in this context, respecting the due process guarantees. We consider that during protests, the dialogue was the most effective instrument to examine the claims of the protesters and to de-escalate situations of violence, including the roadblocks. During the strike, we tried to help with the clarification of the international legal framework for human rights in situation of roadblocks. We documented cases of use of force to remove roadblocks without exhausting dialogue ways or in cases where there were no serious or sustained perturbations. We also documented the effects of some roads, some roadblocks on the exercise of human rights. We believe that Colombia has a strong legal framework to protect peaceful meetings. And also there are important sentences that guide the state in the right application of this right. In the future, this right would be strengthened if the state would have a significant moderation to resorting to removing manifestations. And if it is justified, then the use of force should be the last resource and must follow international standards of use of force. Dialogue must become the foundation to protest management. And this would imply some adjustments to these practices in Colombia, where office believes that it will be useful for the forces and the state to review the protocols of use of force in the framework of protests and its effective compliance to make sure that they won't be instances of unnecessary and disproportionate use of force, including the use of non-lethal weapons and aligned with the historic decision of the Supreme Court of September 22nd of 2020. We greet the creation of the human right department of the police that could foster these studies. Also, we greet the zero tolerance policy announced by the government and its commitment for the investigation of alleged violations of human rights committed by elements of the security forces shall take place in the ordinary justice according to international standards. We encourage the state to keep on working with investigations. We believe it is necessary to strengthen the investigation of crimes committed by third parties against protesters, including acts of racism, and also disciplinary investigations in the cases of stigmatization or attacks against protesters, people fostering dialogue, journalists, and human rights advocates. It is important for these acts not to remain unsolved to strengthen the rule of law in the country. Together with the commission, our office encourages the state to have a strong debate in society on what to change in the police, including the accountability and control mechanisms. We have said before in this debate, we should value the pertinence of the transfer of the 
police to a ministry of a civil authority in order to promote a human rights perspective in the security of citizens. We greet the conversations of the government with countries such as Germany that through technical assistance could improve the situation of public servants and also develop democratic techniques for protest management with a focus on this right to peaceful meetings. We believe that it is important to move forward with processes in order to help victims and also processes of memory in order to avoid repetition. Finally, we would like to point out again the lack of equality in Colombia as the main cause for these protests. And this is why the recommendations of the human rights and social and cultural rights of the UN to the country in 2017 are very important. Our office in Colombia trusts that this hearing or believes that this hearing will be helpful for the government to retain the main recommendations of the commission so that the human rights violations do not take place again. And we are at your disposal, both of the government, the government institution and SCOs to offer technical assistance in order to respect peaceful protests in all the country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now I will give the floor to my colleagues. Please try to keep it short because we are running against time. So I apologize to the special reporters and the team of the secretariat, but I will only give the floor to Ms. Piovesan and Mr. Ralon and Hernandez because we don't have time so that then the S CSOs can use their time. I cannot see all of you, so I don't know my colleagues who would like to take the floor. Please open your microphone. I can see Commissioner Rallon there. Commissioner, thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet the colleagues and the different representatives of, of, of organizations and of the state of Colombia. Undoubtedly, we've heard two dissimilar visions of the organizations as such that reiterate their concerns about different figures, violations of human rights, who request a follow-up mechanism and the vision of the state that considers that a mechanism as posed by the organizations is not convenient at this time, well, it's undoubtedly a, a challenge, this reality, but we would like to state that as commission, we have a monitoring system and we are at your disposal with the open communication channels. The organizations know about our openness as well as the state. We have received your reports we will take them notes of your comments and of the efforts that you are carrying out. And based on that, we will articulate communications in the spaces that allows us um, to, to have competence there. So there is also a commitment of the commission to follow up, follow up each of the recommendations and to use the technical instruments for these kinds of situations as a constructive way and so as to strengthen human rights in Colombia. That's, uh, those are my words. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Rallon, Commissioner Hernandez, and then Commissioner Piaveson. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you all the participants and the civil society, the uh, uh, the state and the office of the high commissioner. The hearing has dealt with the right to peaceful protest, but also the situations that have arised around these 
demonstrations, even though we took the notes that most of these protests have been peaceful, we also took the notes of the commitment of the state in order to warranty this right to peaceful protest. However, what I would like to say is that we have to go beyond the uh, execution of peaceful protest and the warranties for the peaceful protest. These protests aim at making visible situations of unequal situations that people are undergoing in Colombia. And we need to know which are the measures the state is taking in order to address these historical requests or demands. The Ombudsman already talked about a table, but it's important for the state to communicate which are the uh, dialogue actions that have been established. I would like to remind you of two recommendations. Recommendations number one, which is to promote a reinforced uh, dialogue process with a territorial approach to hear all sectors, especially those who have been specially affected by historical and structural discrimination. And the second recommendation that I think is, is already is in force, still in force, which is to draft a law which regulates the scope of uh, right to protest in Colombia. Whatever information you can provide to us, I think will help us understand which is a commitment of the state in order to understand these protests that arose uh, after the national strike. Thank you, Commissioner Piovesan. Thank you, Madam President. I would also like to greet the representation of the civil society, the state, and the representative of the UN. I have two questions as LGBTI reporter. I am concerned by the impact of uh, the violence to groups in situation of vulnerability. Civil society presented a dramatic diagnosis of this situation with figures that are really worrying, for instance, of racialized violence. 37% of homicides have to do with uh, the Afro-descendant population, gender, um, women, LGBTIQ communities. And my first question in relation to this violence, which has a, a differentiated characteristic which is perceived is that there is an aggravated violence if of uh, over these groups if the state is generating disaggregated data within the framework of the protests i would also like to hear more about the training programs with a gender and ethnic and racial approach and diversity and where there are measures for of the state for the ratification of the convention against uh, discrimination and why and which is the answer or the response of the state in order to combat these discriminatory patterns. That would be my first question. I listened carefully the uh, reforms of the police, of the prosecution office, the, the directorate of uh, the Ministry of the Interior. So, so that would be my first question. And the second is that dialogue is the key which the civil society and the commission are uh, underscoring in order to answer to this state of or status of violation. So I would like to understand the stance of the state as presented by the civil society. I would like to understand the stance of the state better. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Piovesan. 
I would also like to thank you for all the information that the civil society organization have given us in this hearing. We would also like to take them down notes about the proposal of the following up mechanisms and the rest of the demands that you have requested, including uh, visits by the commission. We would also like to thank the state and the office of the ombudsperson for all the for the information provided. I would also like to ask about the information on the search mechanism as of the determination of the location of the people who were disappearing. And he explained how this mechanism operated, but we would like to get to know the opinion of the civil society as to this topic. We would also like to thank the uh, Office of the High Commissioner. We will uh, pay attention to this document and we will have to see which are the lessons learned and it's important to have a roadmap based on that. I agree with what the Office of the Commissioner mentioned and uh, as to the attention of the historical and structural topics that have led to some of these issues posed by the civil society organizations and the state and to get to know which are the measures taken by the state in order to mitigate this uh, situation of structural discrimination. And I would also like to get to know the opinion of the civil society organization in relation to what the state mentioned of the process of the reform of the police, they told us that there are the process of dialogues with the different stakeholders. And I would like to get to know the opinion of the CSO present here on how these process of dialogue is being conducted. Something the state mentioned and that will that can broad it a little bit about the figures of um, the the different figures the i would like to reiterate the recommendation number 16 where the commission mentions the need to systematize the data of people detained disappeared uh, dead victims of sexual violence these figures have to be articulated with the civil society. We have to have disaggregated data. And I would reiterate the concern of the commission, as was mentioned in our report, which is the difference of the records of the records by the civil society and the state. As to dead people, the prosecution office talked about 29 and the civil society organization mentioned 87. So I think it's essential to keep on working so as to uh, unify criteria in order to establish who are the victims of the different violations to human rights. And that is why it's important for to establish an articulation between the state and the civil society organizations. I would like to reiterate, unfortunately, we are quite delayed. There are some questions of my colleagues to address to the state. I would like the state to send us the, the answer in written. I would like to move to keep on, but we have another hearing in half an hour and I would like to hear the civil society organizations in the time they have left. But I would like to highlight something that the civil society organizations have posed and the state as well, which is dialogue. The commission have been in constant dialogue with civil society organizations and the state as well. And from that perspective, I think that we have to carry on with these bilateral dialogues, but we also invite you to have a dialogue, to establish a dialogue between the civil society and the state in the different aspects and to insist in the importance of having some kind of forum, probably not a public hearing. It could be a private meeting where the state is present and the civil society organizations together with the commission in order to keep on advancing on the recommendations. With the state, we have spoken a lot about these um, follow-up mechanisms. I understand the concerns of the state. 
we but up, apart from these mechanisms and without giving any names to it i think it's essential to make an effort in order to continue with dialogue and it's important for you to to express your willingness to continue with this dialogue in any way, virtual, public or private visit. And it's important to insist in creating a dialogue with the support of the commission. So thank you very much. I, uh, it's a pity, the lack of time, it shows it's a very important topic. I would like to read um, the, Office of the Ombudsperson and the High Commissioner. We won't have time for extra comments. And we um, are going to give the floor to the civil society organizations. You have 13 minutes and we will have to catch you off because we don't have time for the, for the next hearing then. Thank you, Madam President. Florencia Ricciardo from Segil, I'm going to start this uh, answer together with my colleagues. I would like to make echo of the words you have just said and to call upon the commission and the state to keep on with the efforts and uh, to create a dialogue. We hope that this would be a first forum of dialogue in order to put this into practice because we think that this has to be an exercise of follow-up transparent and there has to be a participation of the state and the so civil society. However, we see with the use of the state uh, 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 of the time by the state has left us without use for such dialogue. The state did not present it any answer to the recommendations of the commission and fails to acknowledge the discoveries of the commission and other organizations. As it stated on uh, recommendations 16, where, where it's recommended to gather data of people who suffered some kind of human rights violations within the protests. Here, once more, the state questions this and this information was supposedly going to be presented in July and it hasn't done so. So uh, from our point of view, it evidences the need of the creation of this mechanism and to have a closer follow-up. And we hope that you can accompany us, even though there can be bilateral meetings, it would be important for the commission to be present in some private meetings. I would like to give the floor to my colleague now. Thank you, Flor. The civil society organization would like to make emphasis that the figures identified by the commission itself in its visits and out of the international organizations we have reported evidence that there have been disproportionate interventions with different abuses of victimizations to civil society. There are several uh, documentary evidence which show this, and we maintain that after their visit, they have continued as to the road obstructions of, le of legal, in legal methods, it's a legitimate way to protest. And as civil society organizations, we do not have information that allow us to understand that there are um, investigations against the public officials who have committed abuses. But we have to uh, start defense against people uh, against whom the investigations advance quickly judicializing young people who participated in the national strike and the use of force has been disproportionate in several cases. However, what contributes to the impunity of these cases is that the state carries out all the efforts so that the human rights violations are remitted or are sent to the military justice. And this does not show the willingness of the state for these investigations to move forward. 
we have to uh, highlight that the proposals of the state are insufficient and there are no differentiated approach where the civil society population, the indigenous people, LGBTQI community and women have been in, have not been invited to participate in any dialogue process process. There have been a use of force to stop um, peaceful protests and the scenarios in which the civil society dialogues with the officials of the state have uh, reduced in terms of the resolution of problems and the unit rate rates that since to April 28, at the beginning of the strike until June 27, there were different red flags and uh, complaints and they were not uh, received by the office of the ombudsperson. We are sure that in November 21, there were new activities of demonstrations because the structural problems in Colombia have not yet finished. I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Maria. Thank you, Luis Carlos. Good morning, President and Commissioners. My name is Maria Cecilia Ibanez. I am a lawyer of the organization Women Free for White, and we would like to insist on the importance of the creation of the special uh, follow-up mechanism. The Commission did not only announce the creation of this mechanism in paragraph 187 presented this year, but it's not coherent for the state to oppose to its creation because it keeps on saying that it's committed to the compliance of human rights. Precisely, it's necessary, this mechanism, because as, as posed by the states, we the, the figures do not match and we need greater clarity on these figures and as, as to the sanctions according to the rights emanated from the Human Rights Convention. In relation to this, we would like to highlight that the language used by the states in the hearing is uh, does not match the international human rights standards. That is why this mechanism is urgent in order to characterize these violent uh, actions as what they have been human rights violation. As Commissioner Joel Hernandez stated, in the future we will have uh, intense demonstrations and that is why it's necessary this follow-up mechanism for the protection of rights of protest right equality and to warranty access to justice therefore we would like to stress that mechanisms are tools constantly used by the commission to contribute with the guarantee of human rights in states therefore Colombia should not oppose to that mechanism. And actually, is that not make sense that a state that is democratic shall not consider the complement offered by the Inter-American system of human rights to guarantee that the violent facts during the national strike will not occur again. Finally, we would like to highlight the issues that we believe from the civil society that should happen in terms of confirmation methodology, accountability, and indicators on the compliance of the recommendations of the commission in this special follow-up mechanism, also with the differential and gender perspectives. Honorable commissioners, then please take into account that in this hearing, the state has shown that it, it has no interest whatsoever in recognizing the human rights violation that took place during the national strike and their lack of due diligence, particularly affects vulnerable groups like indigenous people, Afro-descendants, LGBTQ population and women and children. This is why we truly need this special follow-up mechanism. Therefore, we would like to propose a first meeting after this hearing to talk about the mechanism. Thank you very much. Anyone else from the civil society organizations? Are you done? Yes, we are. Thank you very much again. We are so sorry about what happened with the time. But thank you all very much for being in this hearing. Once again, I would like to thank 
the state for their presence in the meeting and for all the information offered, the SCOs, the ombudsman, and the representative of the office of the high commission. Any extra information that you might believe is useful, please send it to us because it will be very important for us to receive all the information that you might deem necessary according to the topics of this hearing. Once again, I would like to say that for the commission, it is very important to follow up the recommendations established in our press release after the visit. And for this, I would like to say once again that the state should follow these recommendations and also consider the will of the commission for the different themes that might be addressed. And once again, let me tell you about the will of the commission to facilitate dialogue among the different parties in order to move forward with the compliance of recommendations, but especially to move forward with the different issues that are of concern for the civil society organization. And the idea is to put the parties closer. Thank you all very much. And we are available for any meeting bilateral or hopefully in the near future, we can meet together with the state and the SCOs. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye bye.